Hey everybody, so this video is going to go over our final exam review, part two. Uh, make sure you finish up this assignment and get all the answers correct. Uh, just like yesterday, I'm going to open up this assignment for you to take up to three times. Uh, I would suggest you take it once while watching this video uh, to make sure you get all the answers right, and then take it a second or a third time uh, on your own to see where you are with all of this information and if you are able to solve it all on your own. If you are able to get all these answers correct without watching the video, that means you are well prepared to take your final exam and you should get a pretty good grade on it. All right, let's jump into number one here. It says drag and drop three points that are collinear. Uh, here, co means together and linear means line. So these are points that are together on a line. If we look at this line here, we see A, B, and C are three points that are all on the same line. So those will be our collinear points, A, B, and C. All right, if we look at number two here, it says to name a line segment in the plane. There are multiple line segments that you could choose from here, A, B. You could also call this B, A, because it doesn't matter which order you go. Uh, we could say B, C or C, B, and we could say B, D or D, B. So it doesn't matter which ones we go with. Uh, make sure you always use capital letters when you're naming lines or points or arrays or planes. Always use capital letters, so we're going to go with A, B here. All right, next one here, it says identify a pair of opposite rays. Uh, so th I, there are only two rays here that I see. Uh, one is BA and the other is BC, and they are opposite rays. So BA and BC are opposite rays. Opposite rays are rays that have the same endpoint, and they go in opposite directions. All right, number four here, it says to pick three points that are coplanar. So just like collinear, co means together, and plane, you know, this is a plane, just a shape. Uh, so these are points that are together on a plane. Uh, all the points shown here are all on the same plane, so we could pick any of them. Uh, as we go through here, we just have to make sure we pick ones that are actually points. So uh, if we're looking for a point, it should be a capital letter, and there should be a dot next to it showing that it's a point. So point A is one. Point R, R is not a point. Uh, R here is actually naming the plane. You know that because there is not a black dot uh, indicating that it's a point. So R is actually named the plane. Uh, point E is over here. Point E will work. Uh, point L. L is actually the name of this ray or this line here. Uh, it's a lowercase L, so that's how you know it's naming the line and not any sort of point. And also, again, there's no black dots, so that can't work. Uh, point C is our other point. So A, E, and C are all coplanar. All right, next one here. We need to find uh, the midpoint of line QR, and these are the coordinates of QR. So here is our formula that we use to find midpoint. Uh, all we do is take our x's and add them together, then divide by two, and then we take our y's, add them together, and divide by two, and that will give you the x and the y of the midpoint. So let's take our x's first. Our x's here, remember x always comes first, then y, so x's are negative three and negative one. So negative three, plus negative 1, and then we we'll want to divide that by 2. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. <clears throat> when we divide negative 4 by 2, we get negative 2. So this is going to be our x value for our midpoint. Now we got to do our y's. We have negative 9 plus positive 9. And then we're going to divide that by 2. Well, negative 9 plus positive 9 is going just to be 0. So 0 over 2 is of course zero. So zero is going to be our y value. So our x value here was negative two and our y value here was zero for our midpoint. All right, for number six, this time we have to use the distance formula. So the distance formula is similar to the uh, midpoint formula, just a little bit different. So let's go ahead and look at that. So here's our distance formula. Uh, this does look a lot more complex than it is once we start filling in numbers, it gets a little easier. So this is just the square root of, and then we have x2 minus x1, and we're going to square that. Then we're going to add it to y2 minus y1 and square that. So 
Uh, let's just start breaking this down. So we have x2 minus x1. Uh, so our x2 was negative 3. And our x1 was negative 5. So x so minus 5. Uh, negative 3 plus negative 5 is negative 8, and then it, we're going to square it. So negative 8 squared is going to be 64. Uh, let's get our y's now. Uh, it is y2 was 4 plus uh, y2, 1 was negative 2. So 4 plus negative 2 is going to be positive 2, and we're going to square that and 2 times 2 is 4. We now need to add these two together. 64 plus 4 is 68. And then our answer is going to be the square root of 68. So uh, square root of 68 does not come out evenly, so we are just going to leave it as the square root of 68. So we're first going to have to click on this little symbol here that is square root and then we're going to hit 68 and apparently that's not correct so let me double check my math here all right so i figured out what i did wrong um i was mixing up my distance formula and my midpoint formula so uh the mid the distance formula is x2 minus x1 i was adding so uh it's going to be our x's are negative 3 and be minus negative 5. Anytime you have a minus negative, you change that to a plus. So that means uh, negative 3 plus 5 is actually, let me erase all of this, is actually positive 2. And then uh, square that to get 4. Let me just erase all of this. Uh, so we had for our y's 4 minus negative 2. Again, minus a negative, make it a plus. That gives us 6. We're going to square that, and that's going to be 36. And add those together, and we will get the square root of 40. So the answer is not square root of 68. The answer is the square root of 40. There we go. So make sure you are following the formula correctly. Um, it's x2 minus x1 for the distance formula. Uh, it's plus when you're doing the midpoint. All right, for number seven here, we are going to have to make this polygon. It's going to turn out to be a rectangle. So now when you do this, first thing you have to do is click this polygon button, and it's going to let you make a polygon. Then you have to plot each of these points. Remember, when we're uh, plotting points, we always start from the middle here. This is the origin. This is 0, 0. And then we go either left or right first with the first number and then up or down for the second number. So our first number for point A is negative 3. So start at the origin, go left to negative 3, and then negative 2. So we go down 2. Put a dot there. Uh, next one is negative 3 and then positive 5. So this time we're going to go up to 5. Uh, the next one is 5 and then 5 again. And the next one is 5 and then negative 2. If you click back over to your first point, it will close the box and give you uh, your shape. Uh, and then we have a question down here that's asking us what the area of the polygon is. Area for a polygon is length times height, or length times the width, however you want to say it. It's just one side times the other side. Uh, if we have it on a graph, we could just simply count. So from the height here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then our length here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 7 times 8 is 56. All right, for number 8, it says A is the supplement of B, and A is 105. So... Uh, when we are, if two angles are supplement of each other, that means together they equal 180 degrees. 
All right, so this is what we would set up. Uh, again, if there's supplements, that means angle A plus angle B will equal 180. So they tell us angle A is 105, so that means 105 plus whatever angle B is is going to equal 180. And then to solve, all we have to do is subtract 105 from both sides. And we find out that angle B equals 180 minus 105 is 75. So angle B here equals 75 degrees. All right, so this one here is very similar. Uh, again, uh, these angles are uh, supplements of each other. They're supplementary angles. They're also what we call a linear pair. Uh, any two angles that share a line and a side, a base and a side, I should say. So here's the base and here is the side. So if they share both, that means they are a linear pair. And that means together they equal 180. So now we need to set up an equation here to solve for x. So we set this one up just like the last one. We take our first angle, which was 3x plus 14. We add it to our second angle, which was 6x plus 4. And together they equal 180. So to solve here, first thing we have to do is uh, combine like pairs. So we have a 3x and a 6x, which together gives us 9x. And then we have two other like pairs. We have a 14 and a 4. And we add those together, we get 18. And that's going to equal 180. Uh, to solve here, first we got to get rid of this 18. It's positive 18, so we subtract 18 from both sides. These cancel, leaving us a 9x. Equals 180 minus 18 is 162. And then we need to divide both sides by 9. And we get that x equals 18. So here x equals 18. All right, moving on to number 10 here. Uh, if we take a look here, it says that uh, line M and line N are parallel. So what's the value of X? Well, if these two lines are parallel, that means these are consecutive interior angles. Again, they're consecutive because they're uh, on the same side as each other, and they are interior because they are inside the double lines. So... Uh, Consecutive interior angles are supplementary, which means together they equal 180. Uh, for all of these lines, no matter what they ask you, it's always either they're supplementary, together they equal 180, or they are equal. If you can't figure out which is which, um, just kind of look at them. You could see this angle here is much smaller than this angle here, uh, so that means they're not equal so they must be supplementary. If they maybe said this angle and this angle, so you could see these are pretty much the same, and then you know you could put them equal to each other to solve. Um, these are vertical angles, so they're always uh, congruent, but let's go ahead and solve this. All right, so again, same thing. We're going to add these together to get 180. Uh, so first we have to combine our like pairs. We have a 3x and a 5x, which gives us 8x. And then we have a negative 10 and a positive 30, which together gives us positive 20. So 8x plus 20 equals 180. Now to isolate our x, first got to get rid of this 20. It's a plus 20, so we're going to subtract 20 from both sides. These will cancel out, leaving us the 8x. And 8x equals 180 minus 20 is 160. If we divide both sides by 8, we find out that x here equals 20. Okay, so like I was just talking about in that last one here, uh, we have, again, interior angles because they're inside these two lines. And they are alternate. So before they, on this one, they were consecutive because they were on the same side of this transversal. Here they are alternate because they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Now, in the notes, we can see that 
alternate interior angles are congruent, meaning they're the same. But again, if you didn't know that, you could just kind of look at them. Um, all eight angles, four up here and four down here, um, are either going to be equal to each other or they're going to be supplementary. So uh, here we can see these are both kind of smaller angles. They're both less than 90. So that means they are going to be uh, congruent. So when we have congruent angles, we just put them equal to each other, and then we could solve for x. So first thing, we have uh, x's on both sides, so we got to get rid of one of them. You always want to get rid of the lower value. Negative 1 is lower than 2. Uh, since it's negative x, we are going to add x to both sides. That will leave us 2x plus x is 3x minus 10 equals 65. We now isolate our x. First, we got to get rid of this negative 10. So we're going to add 10 to both sides. That leaves us 3x equals 65 plus 10 is 75. And if we divide both sides by 3, we find that x is going to equal 25. All right, so same type of problem here. I mentioned before, vertical angles are always congruent. So that means uh, these two angles here are congruent. So if we want to find the value of x, we just have to set them equal to each other. So here, 40 is equal to 3x plus 10. We just set these equal to each other, and now we can solve for x. First thing we have to do to isolate our x is get rid of this 10. It's a plus 10, so we are going to subtract 10 from both sides. 40 minus 10 is 30. These 10s cancel out, leaving just a 3x. And now we just divide both sides by 3, and we get that x equals 30 divided by 3 is 10. All right, last one here, and it's an easy one, especially after answering number 12. Uh, here, I just mentioned vertical angles are congruent. They are the same. So this is just uh, asking you, vertical angles, they are congruent. So easy enough on the last one. So that is the end of this assignment. Again, make sure you get it finished on Edge Elastic so you can get some extra points. And also make sure that you are using this video while you are taking part two of your final exam. The questions on part two of the final exam are going to be extremely similar to this assignment. So make sure you are watching this video and referencing it when you are taking your final exam. All right, this will be the last video that I do for uh, this class. So I hope you all found them helpful. Uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to help you any more. If you have any questions about anything at all, make sure you ask, and I will see you all later.